welcome to the recording of the February 6th through 9th, 2023 home base meetups. Uh, you're looking at the opening slide for the opening session that we held. Um, to get to these slides, you're going to go to bit.ly um, slash HBMU 2023 February. Again, that's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash H-B-M-U 2023-F-E-B. It is all lowercase and case sensitive. Or if you have a device that you can use the QR code that is currently on the screen. We will touch on a couple of these slides uh, and then we will go into the NESIS portion of the breakout sessions for home-based meetups. So just a quick overview on the screen, which you can read at your own leisure. I just want to get down to our schedule. This was the schedule for the day. This is where we went west to east. And then just wanted you to bookmark your dates from May 1st through the 4th. Go to the calendar of events to find out the locations. Those home-based meetups will also be face-to-face. -face. And again, we are moving west to east during May 1st through the 4th. So please bookmark your calendars for May 1st through 4th home-based meetups and go to the calendar of events. Go to May and, and you can find the locations for those events. This slide, um, you'll need to get to each of the slide decks for all of our home-based products, NISA, SchoolNet, PowerSchool, SIS, Canvas, and Learning.com. Um, DTL did present some updates, so if you'd like to look at those, there is the slide deck for the DTL updates. Um, we have some new staff on our team, Donna Curry, our digital subscriptions and technology analyst. Don Jennifer Causey is now our home-based communication specialist. Uh, and again, here are some recent victories that I'll let you read over on your time. Additional of those. Um, coming up soon will be opt-in processes. The CIS will continue their coffee chats. Uh, Canvas, if you uh, help with Canvas, check out the admin training opportunity in the Canvas slides. Uh, and then the future of home-based meetups. And again, some additional information. I'm going to go back to the slide that has the links. Oh, going wrong way. For the slides right there. Let's jump over to the NISA slides. Okay, so here we are with NISA's home base meetups, February 2023. The bit.ly to get to these slides uh, is bit.ly forward slash hbmunces 0 Two, three. That's for the NISA's home base meetup slides, the North Carolina Educator Effectiveness System. Our agenda for today um, is to go over successes and challenges, what's new since September. This is a DPI update. Uh, talk about a system enhancement survey that will be going out towards the end of February to all district administrators and principals. Um, then we will include a link. Uh, we did have 30 minutes with Sean Vare. He joined us each week, February, each day, February 6th through the 9th, and presented a recording on creating and using staff groups and PD playlists successfully. We'll also review the end of year that will be coming up soon and the reports uh, um, that you need to run in your system prior to the end of the year. This slide, we would like for you, if you have that open, to please check and click this link right here. Then click on a district lead if you are a public school district. If you are a charter district, click on here to check the list of your leads uh, that are reported for your school location. You can search for your district here 
So let's just do one. Um, so let's look at Chatham. And then you would click here and look at the leads that are listed. Uh, it starts with your sis lead, your niece's leads and backups. Just make sure everybody in this list is current at your school. This list is helpful for DPI to contact you. Um, and it's also helpful as PSUs need to contact a neighboring district or other district. You have new staff and you need to let that former district know to please inactivate them. This is where you go find those leads to contact, especially for the home-based products. In the middle is just a list of your contacts for NESIS and the home base team. We do have home base advisory board representatives that meet with DPI quarterly and go over the NESIS roadmap. Uh, then they um, report back to you all uh, about any news or you can contact them about what's going on uh, with the roadmap and NESIS and the input that they can share from those meetings. We're also working very closely with our um, regional consultants with digital teaching and learning so if you did not know you have regional consultants they can come out they can present at your district they can coordinate others to come and present or offer pd or just get you the information that you need especially concerning digital teaching and learning the digital learning plan and the home-based systems If you're not a member of the NESIS email group, this is a PSU managed group, a public school unit. Um, the managers are Brian Probst with Buncombe County and Patricia Colden with Lee County. If you're not a member of this group, this is a great area to network. Just send an email requesting access uh, to that group and we will get you added. Again, DPI does um, monitor the group, but does not jump in because you guys are great at answering each other's questions. Wanted to let you know that we do have two NESIS end of year webinars for 2023. So on February 28th from 4 to 5 p.m., I will be presenting with Jennifer Bass, our NESIS coordinator, the end of year principal evaluation processes. This is for principals and the super or the uh, the evaluators, excuse me, the evaluators of principals. So this webinar is for the evaluators of principals and the principals. It will touch on a little bit of the principal process uh, for ending the year with their teachers, but the full webinar for the teacher and staff side of things for end of year processes will take place on March 7th, and this is for teachers and the support staff, uh, then the evaluators and observers of those staff on ending the year and doing those final activities doing summary evaluations, and so on. Please join us for those two webinars and share this out with everybody that uh, would like to jump on and join here. Each of these does earn a certificate uh, for CEU, for 0.1 CEUs for the one hour of training, um, and then you can turn that into your district for approval. I do want to take a quick look at the palette that we did. Just want to let you know this link is here. We won't go through all of this in this recording, but you can come out here and see the successes that were reported, any challenges that were, were reported, and we talked about. Uh, then we did try to answer the registration questions here. So if you'll scroll down uh, to these lower ones, you can see that I put the answers out here, who to contact, what pages to go find the answers on. Um, these, again, were your registration. For those of you that register for the home-based meetups, what kind of questions you had pre-meeting. And then, of course, we have some DPI actions. As we talked about these things, we moved some of the items over to this side for DPI to follow up on. So let's get into our NESIS updates for the 2022-2023 school year. So what's new in NESIS? We recently in October, I believe, yep, released in October and released 22.9.1.0, the evaluation tally box color change. I'm hoping your site administrators and observers, your evaluators 
are really liking this update because when you're working in the rubric to finalize the rubric, you must have at least one tally box checked for every element. Uh, so you either need to say it wasn't looked for or you need to check a tally box for what was observed or what is known. Now when you check a tally box, it does turn orange. So now it's very helpful to quickly see why don't I have finalized in my drop down? Well, here's a row in the middle where you can see that uh, there is no orange tally box. So this area, this element needs to have at least one check box checked. The other thing to get the finalize is make sure that the evaluator observer has shared this rubric with the staff that was observed. So you need those two things, a shared status and a one box at least in each element must be checked. And now you can see that it is orange. So you can quickly troubleshoot that. The next update was also in October in 22.9.2.0. Um, now when, if you're using targeted announcements in Nesis, you know that you can send announcements and that's this top part of the screenshot. Those announcements show up to staff under their envelope. Now it does list who sent this announcement. If you're using the email portion to send this announcement also by email, it does come from a no reply email, but down in the body, it will say who sent the email. For those of you that are opted into home base and are using a PD office in Nesis, under the professional learning component of Nesis. Now, if you are setting up instructional leg courses, uh, you, if you set your course dates, you have the option to print out a sign-in sheet. In that sign-in sheet, now you will see the building and room number if you filled out that um, field on the section setup of the course. This is when you're creating a course, you create a section for the course, you manage the fields in the section, and again, it's a building and room number. Um, in fact, I think it says room number slash building, uh, but here it shows it's building slash room number on the sign-in sheet, and it will list that um, title right there. It will list the room and whatever you put in that field. So if you could list just the building, you can list the room number, you can list both in that field, and it will show on the sign-in sheet. We also updated in September, or October, sorry, October, in release 22.10.0.0. We now have split out this new support demographic that was added. The support demographic is for staff that are not evaluated in NESIS, but they access professional development. Some of those staff also needed to be peers and observer. So we split out from support and created a support certified. So these staff now can also access the staff evaluations tab and complete their peer or mentor duties. So that was successfully implemented in October. There are resources on this page for the PD only people that are in NESIS. Last year, there was an uh, issue identified, I uh, believe, by Wake County when they used the export to PDF function. The number of files generated uh, was not matching. So the system would say you have 352 files, but when you actually counted the files generated, you had 342 files. So now that was fixed for Wake County. That was the only district that reported this. Um, so, but know that this is now fixed. Uh, so when you do use export a plan for PDF, it will generate the correct number of files uh, that were listed as generated. Here are a couple export to PDF resources. This report is good to use at end of year for those of you that want to keep individual PDFs for your staff for their summary evaluations. It's also good to use um, to use the template reports that are included in here for those beginning teacher records audits that happen. Um, this will be a good place to generate those individual PDFs that show those signatures and dates and who did, who did the signatures uh, for that records audit. 
within the PDPs, um, there was a teacher classification field. Teacher classifications in NISIS that tell if you're comprehensive or standard, the system calculated. Uh, it looks to see if you if the classification codes say you are a beginning teacher, which will put you as comprehensive classification, or if you're a career teacher, which would put you as standard classification. This is not fully clean in NISIS for details too numerous to do during this presentation. Um, so what we've done is worked with the NISIS business owner and we've he's agreed that we could remove from the PDPs and this is the PDP initial review container and the PDP record of activities print template report for initial review. We've removed the classification field from here so that staff are not confused when say they're a standard teacher or an abbreviated teacher, career teacher, but they're seeing that the classification field says comprehensive. So that has been removed from that area. Finally, we're also working on, for those of you that do create PD courses and the professional uh, learning component in your PD office, uh, coming hopefully this summer, uh, we've been using this in test, is the ability to determine uh, or to add every single credit type that your course would apply to. So like for DPI, when we create courses, we always set the credit type for the most part to general credit. We'll award you general credit when you complete a course. But that course could also apply to digital literacy or leadership. So now when we put this in place in production this summer, you will be able to choose all credit types that could apply as the course creator. And then on this right hand screenshot, when the participant registers for the course, they will see each credit type, but they must bullet the credit type that they wish to be awarded when they complete the course. So this was uh, reviewed with several um, PSUs across the state and everybody said, yes, this will be a good item to have that will streamline the um, credits that are shown on the NISIS My transcript so because every staff should know what credit type they need so if they don't need general but they could use a dlc credit and that course says well you can choose between general or dlc they can select the dlc and then that will be awarded when they complete their course so watch for news as to when that will be implemented into nisa's production Um, our NISIS Resource Hub for Administrators has been pretty much fully updated now. So if you don't have access, this again is when you navigate in NCN Cloud and go to the blue canvas icon. Um, now you can go to the NISIS Resources folder uh, and NISIS Admin Hub and see all the updates that are included and in all the areas out there. So this will take you to the hub. If you have any questions, you will be prompted to log in to get to this site if you're not already logged in to NC Ed Cloud IAM. And here is that resource hub. Now, if you come out here and you don't have access, just scroll down to the left on the blue rail, home based resources. And click on NISIS if you're trying to get to the NISIS Admin Hub and enroll in the course. Once you enroll in the course, the course will show on your dashboard. We'll get there. And right here it is. Notice you can sign up for Canvas, for SchoolNet, PowerSchool, go open and see, and learning.com. So here is NISIS. If you're brand new to NISIS, here's a getting started area. And then we have modules for beginning of year, middle of year, end of year, admin reporting, professional development, the year overview for NISIS, and troubleshooting. Courses will be coming next school year. If you can't get to the blue canvas at all, please email home underscore base at dpi.nc.gov and we will check that access for you.
Okay, so our next section is what's next for Nisus. Uh, one of the things that we are meeting with the Nisus business owner is Tom Tomberlin, and Jennifer Bass is our Nisus coordinator for the policy and standards side. Uh, and we are meeting with our Nuggets group, the Nisus user group, uh, monthly to review the staff demographics in Nisus. And this also in concerns the HR data that shows in NESIS, especially in staff profiles or staff details screen. Um, we have identified that teachers with residency, uh, the residency teachers, their licensure codes do need to be updated in our NESIS requirements so that the demographics will show their correct cycle year in NESIS, uh, their licensure cycle year. Uh, that we will we'll be working on in the, in the coming months. Um, we also, what we talked about earlier, remove that teacher classification field from the PDP areas of um, the record of activities container and the print template and the initial review activity. So those are a couple things that have come out of those conversations. Uh, what does your PSU need to do as far as HR data? Um, just verify and clean up your staff data. Um, this is a collaborated effort between NESIS and your HR finance payroll uh, department. Check the staff UID active status. So this is in UID. Make sure that is cleaned up as well. Um, ensure your primary locations are set correctly for your staff. Um, then for the HR data, if you're using HRMS or Link HR, um, the field shown in this link right here, the NISIS HR data import instructions, they are sending that to DPI. So just make sure that HRMS and Link HR, the person that handles those, um, does get any new staff updates or changes in staff data um, that are included in that. And I'll show you which fields. Let's click on this link right here that come in from your HR data. So one of those fields is, again, your staff's UID number, um, their district location code, their last name and first name and middle name, just like UID, uh, upload from payroll. And then here is the classification field. Um, they should be sending one of these codes for career staff, SP2 licensure people, the CLC, and then for beginning uh, teachers, one of these following codes that I've highlighted here um, should be entered in that uh, table or form, whoever handles HRMS or Link HR. Uh, the pre-K teacher, yes or no, if they're a pre-K teacher. And then the business email address. So this email address. Remember I said PowerSchool is our authoritative source for emails, but if the staff is in NESIS and doesn't really access PowerSchool SIS, they may not be in PowerSchool SIS, their email would be sent to us from the HR data. So make sure those emails are updated as well. And then of course their primary location code. Now what if you're not using Link HR or HRMS? This may affect some of our charters or other schools. So you would use this form and you would manually send that to us. Uh, you would use all the fields here except for the pre-K teacher. And if you're a charter, you would also not enter the primary location. You are the primary location. This is the headers that you need on the data spreadsheet that you will be uploading. So you just copy that and then enter those fields for each of your staff. This page is the directions on how to upload or where to upload as well. So this is the site you're going to need access to to upload your HR data. Um, and then it does need a username and password. You would either email home underscore base at dpi.nc.gov or myself, cami.naren. So C-A-M-I dot N, like in Nancy, A-R-R-O-N, like in Nancy, at dpi.nc.gov. For the username and password to this site, if you are uploading your HR data to DPI, to this site right here, this dpi.state.nc.us, 
the HR data. So just make sure, find out from your district if you are uploading this. We do realize, and we are working with Tom Tomberlin for the future as modernization moves forward, um, that these codes at some point do need to be updated. So these are the original career status codes recognized in NESIS. Your district does have um, flexibility on using other classification codes in their systems, in the HRMS system. So if they are using their own unique identifying codes in that system, and NESIS will not update the demographics based on those unique codes. It has to see these codes to update correctly in NESIS. Now, NESIS is not authoritative on the classification of staff. So career status staff, they would um, be identified as standard. And then the beginning teacher codes, they would be identified as comprehensive um, in NESIS. So just know that if you want that to show correctly in NESIS, these are the codes to use. If you're using your own locally identified or set up codes, it will not show correctly in NESIS. But again, NESIS is not authoritative for this um, definition here. We will be working with Tom Tomberlin uh, moving forward to see if we can better define that to show correctly in NESIS. All right, we did have what's next for staff email issues. Um, recently, in the last couple of weeks, we noticed some issues with emails uh, that were populating to NC Ed Cloud IM and NESIS. This has since been fixed. Um, email addresses that are stored in HRMS and Link HR uh, and the manual uploads, those should now be coming in correctly. However, I am still seeing a lot of emails for staff, excuse me, let me get on the right slide, that show this no reply at powerschool.com or no reply at truenorthlogic.com. Some of you are starting the modernization process and have selected other systems to handle your HR data, um, like Tyler or Oracle. So we will be following up with those districts that have reported that the emails are not updating. Maybe they've moved to Tyler, uh, and now the emails are not coming in correctly to NISA. So we will be following up on those. But if you'd like to check your staff, I have created an ad hoc report a people ad hoc report and published it to NESIS district administrators to run. So you would go to reports, my ad hoc reports, search for um, staff email in NESIS report, and I'll show you that live, and then check for staff once you have that report and you've downloaded the CSV file and opened it in Excel. You can then filter for the no reply emails to see which staff have do not have their email coming in correctly to NESIS. This is important in NESIS, especially if they're getting evaluated in NESIS, to be able to get those act, plan activity notifications that go to their email addresses. So if their email is showing it no reply, they are not getting those activity notifications. Or if you are sending them targeted messages or targeted announcements, they would not get their announcement or their email uh, because their email in NESIS is showing as a no reply email. Now let's look at this live. And where you want to go is to reporting. And you're going to scroll down to my ad hoc reports and you're going to click show all. Now, this is a long list for some folks. I, am, I do drop off these older reports, so we'll be dropping off some of these older reports this summer. But you can always, like if you're on a PC, you can do that Control F to search for people to get to the people reports. So here are the people reports, and this is the report. Let me zoom in. People uh, with an asterisk, staff email in NESIS report. And you can run this report. And then an email bill will be sent to you when it's viewable. Uh, when you when you when it's sent to you, you just come back to reporting. 
and go down to My Ad Hoc Reports. You can close that one and go to My Cash Reports. Open it up and you can see how that report has already run for me. So it runs fairly quickly. Once I have that report, I'm not going to go to it because I don't want to show any UID numbers, but there will be a way to download on the top right. There should be uh, a download CSV area. So you use the download CSV to download your report and then open it up in Excel or whatever spreadsheet system you are using and you can then filter it to find those no reply emails. All right, then finally, the, I have a survey that's going to go out by the end of February. Um, if you've joined us for home base meetups before or um, some of our meetings that we've held, uh, I have sent out the notice that we will not be updating to the new forms, uh, new OBS 3 that PowerSchool had been working with us to do. Uh, PowerSchool has decided not to support forms um, to observations three um, for any of their customers uh, they will continue to support it but they will not be um, enhancing or upgrading that system so because of one side of the system is built out in java the other side in microsoft.net so they want to have a system that is not in two different um, source codes or build codes uh, so they are going to let us know later what they will be picking for all of their customers so we will we are on the nieces system which is called in power school perform enterprise and professional learning uh, we are on their legacy system uh, with that i have put in several enhancement requests for the system and so they have agreed to work with us to possibly update some of those requests and one of those was that orange tally box that you saw so on this page is a draft of the form or survey that will be going out um, so do not you don't need to fill this out now this is just the draft so i will finish this form and get it sent out this in a couple weeks so by the end of february we are going to send this to our district administrators in nesis uh, the nesis assigned district administrators and to the principals and then your district can decide if other um, folks should get that if other folks should get this survey um, it should really not go to your teachers and your support staff that are in nesis we would like this to go to administrators so we've identified 10 of the evaluation side of the system enhancement requests that I've put in. And you can see I put a number here. This number is referencing PowerSchool Ideas Portal. So in the PowerSchool Ideas Portal are those enhancements that I've requested. Uh, you do not need to go to the portal. I will include a link for you to see those in a wakelet. So you'll open that wakelet and you'll work with you can fill this out individually or a school team your of your district administrator and principals if you like um, in here i do include a link to the um, power school ideas portal you do have to have an account in power school community and that's help.powerschool.com um, to be able to see this in the ideas portal however i in here i will list a descriptor of that enhancement request and I am including a screenshot of each proposed enhancement so I'm going to ask when I send out this uh, survey that your group or you individually will review the 10 enhancements that are listed out here feel free to email me at any point if you have any questions about these enhancement requests but as you go through you're going to decide which of these 10 out of these 10, which five would you like to see most for DPI and PowerSchool to work on to enable in the system uh, as soon as we can? We'd have to develop a testing and time frame on that. But this is a survey that will be going out at the end of the month. Again, this is a survey to identify uh, our PSUs, their top five uh, request for enhancements for the evaluation component of NESIS. 
Next on the agenda, we had a 30-minute training with PowerSchool's Sean Vare on creating and using staff groups and PD playlists. Uh, that link will be posted uh, when this presentation goes out uh, so that you can watch that as well. It's very informative on how to create and use staff groups in NESIS and then also how to use those PD playlist in NESIS. You do not need a PD office to use PD playlist. You just need to notify myself, Cammie Naren, uh, if you have somebody that wants to manage a PD playlist and I will give them the moderator access to create a PD playlist in NESIS. Here's just a screenshot of what the PD playlist can look like. Um, so playlists can be set up by your district. Uh, they are a list of PD opportunities in NESIS bundled together in a playlist. Courses can be required and you can also have elective courses in there as well and set rules for how many electives they must complete. Uh, this is very handy for those ECAS, MTSS courses. Uh, maybe you have a PD office and you're creating courses uh, PD opportunities for new teachers that are coming in, anything that you can think of that can be bundled together and required for staff to take. Uh, creating the staff PD playlist is awesome. It also gives you a nice dashboard so you can follow the progress of your staff. So coming up for NESIS will soon be our end of year. We are urging all public school units to complete all plans prior to the end of the year. Build in time to complete the running of reports. So we need those finished in time to complete the running of reports. Uh, end of year does happen in June. Uh, last year it was June 29th. Uh, this day is usually set by our SIS system, our PowerSchool SIS system. It'll either be the 29th or the 30th. We watch for communication from NCDPI on that. NESIS never really um, goes down like the SIS system does. You still can access PD component of NESIS uh, on the 30th. We do kind of ask you to um, have light use of the system on the 30th because we will be running reports at NCDPI. As long as you have your plans completed by the 29th and you have your reports run or at least started uh, on the 29th, they will complete DPI will run their reports that are needed for EVOS. Those standard summary ratings reports uh, will be run on the 30th, and then we will notify PowerSchool to please archive the 22-23 uh, plans. Your end-of-year checklist. Um, please confirm your My Staff roster list are accurate. Uh, make sure you work with your payroll uh, HR department to clean up any inactive staff that are still showing in your system. Uh, delete and archive unnecessary active evaluation plans. This you can do under staff evaluation. Who has access to delete or archive unnecessary plans? Well, that's anyone with reopen rights. That's going to be most of you with the district administrator rights, unless your role is superintendent. If you should have reopen archive delete rights as a superintendent and you have DA rights, those reopen rights can be manually re-added in the My Staff Administration Staff Management page. A district should also confirm that evaluation and PDP plans are complete. All required steps are done, all signatures are done, and the, all containers are locked, and the summary evaluation is complete and locked in the evaluation plans. Here's a screenshot to show you where you can see that archive or delete uh, when you navigate to staff evaluations if you have the reopen rights, which gives you access to archive and delete. Um, delete in NESIS is no longer a hard delete. Uh, we're going to work on updating this wording to say deactivate because you are actually deactivating the plan. It is no longer, it will no longer be viewable to administrators, but it does stay in the owner, the staff's 
uh, my evaluation page under deactivated plans tab. So the owner of the plan can navigate to my evaluation and view those um, deactivated plans under the deactivated tab. There are several quick reports that will help you with cleaning up staff uh, in NESIS. A gr good one um, that most people run for those staff that are active in more than one district is this second one listed here, individuals who belong to sites in more than one district. And then your district needs to decide if you need to clean up the data or if you need to contact a previous district to clean up their active statuses for former staff. You can also run a report for individuals belonging to more than one site within your district. Uh, this is perfectly acceptable. Acceptable. You do have staff that serve more than one school. However, maybe they are only serving school A and B, but they are also showing active for school C. And again, work with your payroll uh, HR people that export those records from staff UID and uh, from payroll, excuse me, that export the records from payroll and then they upload that to staff UID. And of course, staff UID is where the person import file for NESIS comes from every night. Do keep in mind um, finance and payroll and HR as they hire staff for 23-24, the upload they make to Staff UID should have the active status of those staff set to no until after the fiscal school year ends on June 30th, i.e. do not activate new 23-24 staff until July 1 or after. Again, do not activate new staff until July 1 or after. This is to not add them to the roster page for the current school year in NESIS. How do those summary containers, when do they open for the evaluators to complete the summary evaluations? Uh, this screenshot shows you what must be completed and locked to then open the summary evaluation activity. So for comprehensive plan, it's all three observations and a peer observation. Does not matter if they are a beginning teacher. If your district has um, guidance that any new teacher they hire goes on a comprehensive plan for one to three years, if they're on that comprehensive plan, the peer must be complete before that summary will be opened. Uh, the standard plan, all three observations must be complete. Peer is optional. Abbreviated plan, two observations are in the abbreviated plan that must be complete. And then late hire plan, at least that first observation must be complete. Additional observations can be done, but completing that first observation and locking it will open the summative container. Here's a screenshot of what is needs to be locked when a plan is fully complete. So again, here's the comprehensive plan, all three observations, the peer, and then the summary is completed and locked, and so on as you look at standard, abbreviated, and lay higher. So a few questions. How can you check if a plan is locked? What reports will you run at the end of the school year? What is the status of completion? How do I check that on my evaluations and PDP plans? If you navigate to staff evaluations, you have a quick view of the summary column. So make sure you scroll over, uh, load up your um, evaluations. You can use your filters to just check all the abbreviated plans. So you add a filter and you would do active plan equals comprehensive or abbreviated for the current school year, update your table, and then you're only looking at those plan types. Or you can just do like this, look at all your plans, all your evaluation plans, look at the summary evaluation uh, row or column. If you see a green check and a lock, then that plan is fully completed. So here you can see observation one and two are completed and locked for abbreviated and now they've locked and completed the summary. So this abbreviated plan is fully complete. You can also run some reports. Go to reporting, 
select the module quick report and choose activity lock report. It's the first report in the list. Uh, that lock report, if you know that activity is locked, then the signatures are done. All required steps are in for that summary. Uh, there's also another quick report that a lot of districts like. That's your evaluation completion exception report. It reports on all the activities in a plan let you know, is it not started? Is it in progress? Is it complete? It does not report if things are locked. The next report down is also a quick report and you can, when you know your summaries are done, you can run evaluation summaries under a quick report. These are good to run and keep, so make sure you keep a copy of those. The run evaluation completion report. This is found on staff evaluations. You're look, looking for the graph icon on that page. It's on the far right, uh, kind of toward the top right corner. There will be a graph icon and then you choose the report named evaluation completion report. When this comes up, you're going to pick a plan. So here they pick standard evaluation. You would do it for the current school year. Uh, it does load up with all the activities checked. So if you're only checking to see if everything's locked, you can come down here to this blue button, deselect all the checks, come back, check the lock activities, and refresh your data. Then you'll scroll down and you get this pretty color-coded um, uh, activity status report. And so here you can see that um, if lock observations are complete. So for, for this school, this staff, uh, they, nobody has started on any of those locking activities. Uh, here you can see at this school, they are complete with um, observation one and observation two, but observation three has not been started or locked yet. So this is a good report that you can use. Uh, just a reminder, this is one of the only reports in NESIS that will show you if plans are assigned but never started. And you will look at this overall status column. So if somebody has a plan assigned but not started, you'll see not started under the overall status column. You can run ad hoc reports as district administrators. We have the webinars here. We've included the links to the help guides. So here are the ad hoc reporting and uh, uh, re webinar listed here. Some of the ad hoc reports, they are, there are several uh, areas in ad hoc that you can choose to print reports from. I noted some on this slide. So if you go down and look for assessment completion, let me start over. If you navigate to system administration, go down on the left and choose um, ad hoc report restricted. Restricted just means that it, it's going to restrict the results to your access and location rights. So if you look for assessment completion, that can give you a, a report on the self-assessment activity statuses. The evaluation forms report, you can run a report on orientation activity statuses, observation and conference dates. Evaluation forms single row, maybe you're looking for a report that includes those activity signatures. That topic uh, is a good one to run. Evaluation status, uh, this is where you can run those locking activity reports and include additional parameters in there. Or you can also pull evaluation process completions. And then we have the observations uh, topic, summary evaluation report with comments. Maybe somebody wants to see if your evaluators and observers are making good comments on their observation conferences. So, or in the rubric. So observations, you can run a report that shows comment fields. Observation single row, this is good to set up summary evaluation reports. So maybe you ran the quick reports for summary evaluation, but you needed additional fields. Come over to the ad hoc reports and create your own report. And then you can also include your summary evaluation standards and elements in that report. 
Here's just a quick look at a couple of ad hoc reports. This first one is evaluation form single row, uh, the signature report. So notice you can see who is signed and when they signed for all of the activities. This one is observation single row to run those summary ratings reports. Uh, and then here you see um, you'll have names, statuses, whatever you check to show on the report. Here I've checked to show standard one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, you can see that this one is not fully complete because it still has a choose one on it. Um, your report is also downloadable. So if you look up here, you can download that CSV and open it in Excel. Just a reminder that from middle of year to end of year, your administrators, your principals um, can go and continue to recommend or require PD courses for staff goals. Um, you can go and do this in the observation rubric is one area. Here is a guide in the rubric. There will be a light bulb next to all the standards if our course creators have aligned their course to a standard. This is helpful for staff who are maybe struggling with one of their goals and they've uh, added an element or a standard uh, in that goal. You can go find a course that they can take and recommend or require them to take it. Help guide is right here. This one also shows that when you go to staff evaluation, scroll down below the summary evaluation and you can recommend learning opportunities. Here's a couple screenshots. You'll click add opportunity, search for available courses, check whether you should require them or whether you want to require them or recommend them. And then that shows up to the staff on their My Courses page that have containers for recommended training or required training. Here's some steps for if you want to go to professional development page and search through all the courses. So not all courses have been aligned to standards, so maybe you want to come search for a course to see what's out there and you find one you want to recommend. So there, if you're a site or district administrator, you will see this recommend link here. Uh, and then just follow the steps on this page to fill out this form and recommend that training to the staff. There's a screenshot at the bottom for what the staff will see in the recommended training container. When administrators recommend or require courses, it does list their name and the date that they recommended or required that course. The staff then just needs to click on the course title to start that course. Here's another view of the recommended training channel. Uh, the recommended training container does allow the staff to hide any courses that are recommended. Uh, you can see that some of these uh, are recommended but don't have a name after them. That means they were recommended by the course creator. When an administrator recommends courses, a reminder that it puts your name and the date that you recommended those. Here's a look at the required training channel. In there, uh, again, the same thing except for the staff cannot hide. They don't have that eye icon on recommended, on sorry, on required training, so they cannot hire, hide required training. All right, again, we said it's end of year. Uh, district administrators, you need to be checking your system. Run, 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 save, save, save any and all reports that you will need for this coming summer and next school year. Uh, try to save hard copies, digital copies of staff plans as they leave during the school year because when they leave your school system, their plans deactivate and they go with them so that Oh, the plans go with the owner of the plan. So if they've left your district, they're going to another North Carolina district, that plan moves with them and you no longer have access to that report. And some of you need that um, as you're planning for next year or as you're reporting, uh, gathering that data from the current school year uh, at the end of year to um, discuss and learn from how things were done this current school year. You may want to save those before the staff leaves. 
um, train your staff to print their own copies of their PDP plans, uh, evaluation plans, and their PD transcript. Uh, that way, if they need those for their next um, employment opportunity, they will have copies of those and won't need to come back later and request those from you. Because once they leave, again, you may not have access to their past year plans and you would have to open a ticket with DPI to request us to provide that to you because we cannot provide those directly to any staff that are asking us for them. They must go back to their previous district to get copies of past year plans. Uh, work with your payroll, maybe to leave staff that are not going to another district active until June 29th. That's just a suggestion. Some districts do this to keep the staff active on when they're running reports. Um, export to PDF if you use that. That will pull active and inactive staff as long as they are still connected with your district. And re again, reminder, do not activate new, brand new staff for the 23-24 school year until after July 1, 2023. One of the reports that you can run at the end of the school year is through export a plan to PDF. You navigate, if you're a district administrator, you have this access and you'll click on system administration, um, look left, look all the way down and choose export a plan to PDF. Um, we're going to walk through how to set up your um, export a plan to PDF to pull the summary evaluations. And that's after your summary evaluations are complete, you can run this report. PowerSchool has assured us that it will continue running even if you started it late, like that last week. Um, people that are in the queue for export a plan to PDF, who's ever in the queue first will get their report run first. Um, but anybody behind them, it will keep running every night until your reports are complete. So don't let that stop you from scheduling and export a plan to PDF. Um, some districts have a ton of people and they choose not to keep a uh, export of those summary evaluations. They train their staff to keep their own um, uh, plan PDFs, but then other districts use those uh, records as they're planning the next school year and as they are reviewing the previous school year. So determine with your district if this is doable for you and you want to do this. Uh, it does give you an individual PDF for each summary evaluation for each staff that you've run the report for. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, do contact me. We're gonna walk through the screenshots on this. And if you do want to try this and you wanna walk through, um, you can always uh, make an appointment with me, just email me and we can walk through this together. Uh, again, it's very handy. This is also used, I have help guide out there for setting up the summary evaluation, export a plan to PDF, and a help guide for those BT audits that happen in the fall. Um, you can run this as well and get the signatures and everything you need in individual PDFs. So you'll all have a stack of those ready for your PD out, BT audit. Uh, again, we're going to focus on summary evaluation right now. So you've clicked on system administration, you've looked left, and you've chosen export a plan to PDF. Um, make sure here. You would have selected a plan type, and we are going to go through all of these steps and look at how to set this all up. So here's that, what I just said, the navigation. System Administration, Export a Plan to PDF. This is the dashboard page for Export a Plan to PDF. At the top, you'll see your button for scheduling any new exports. Then here's your export queue. Once you've set up your export, it will load up in the export queue. Uh, it will run every, each night, it runs until they complete. They do run a lot faster than they did three or four years ago. So I've not had any issue with any export that I've run recently. And they've also cleaned up all of the errors we were seeing. I have not seen any people running reports that have fatal errors recently. So do um, have confidence in being able to run and export a plan to PDF. 
When your uh, export queue uh, report has run, uh, it will then fall under the completed export. You will get an email uh, to come back out here. Uh, as we go through the plan, I've crossed out FTP. We do not have a way for you to send this report to an FTP site. You must choose that it will be downloaded in Nesis and you will set the date for how long you want it to be available for download. So once they are ready, they will show up here and you can download your uh, PDFs. So we're going to start with schedule a new export. This is the page to pick which plan you want to run. I like to use this filter. Sometimes I just put a year in here like 2023 and then you'll um, click enter on your keyboard and it will load up all the plans that have the year 2023 in them. So 2022, 23 reports will load up. You're going to select which plan, late hire, abbreviated, standard, or comprehensive, um, or PDP that you want to run. So we're going to click uh, standard evaluation in this example and then click next. So what type of report do we want to run? We are going to bullet partial export because we only want the summary evaluation activities. The full export will include all those activities in the plan. Remember when we ran that staff evaluation completion report, it had all the activities checked. All of those activities that you saw on that checklist will be included in the full export. There is also a template export. So when you go into your evaluation or your PDP and you go to that record of activities um, and they have those reports that you can run in there, those are called template reports. That is what shows in this template export. Those reports that you could pick in the record of activities, those are signature reports. Uh, for the PDP, there are actually four different templates um, that you could choose from. And then if you chose advanced export, it's going to include a full export and the template export. And you're going to click next. We bulleted partial export. We're going to click next. We're on step three to select the activities you want to see in this report. So here, um, when you're running that summary evaluation, uh, you're going to scroll all the way down until you get to the summary evaluation section and then check any of the summary evaluation uh, data that you want to include in your report. Once you've checked the boxes that you want to include, click next. The next step is called users. You're going to select the users to include in this report. You can select those by site. So maybe you have certain schools you want to include in this report. Just click on the button that says include site. It turns yellow and then says exclude site. Doesn't mean the site is excluded. It means if I selected this school and didn't mean to, mean to select it, I can click exclude site and return it to, uh, to not be included in the report. So just know that when you click include site, it turns yellow, it's included, but if you need to before you leave this page, you can exclude it. Uh, you could also select by specific users. Um, in here, you want to include all your users in the system or choose specific users, you would bullet that. Once you've selected your sites or users, you can click next. Now, who gets a notification of this report? Uh, definitely somebody that's in Nesis, preferably you, that is running the report. So put in your name. You can put first name, last name, or here I've put my last name, comma, space, first name. Give it a minute. It's looking for you, and it will pop up your name. When you see your name, click on it, and then it will add you to the list of people to receive that notification. Um, does somebody in your district need to know when you're running this report and do they need notification of when the report is ready? You can add their email in this box here, uh, separate uh, multiple people with commas in there, and then they will get a notification. They don't get the report. 
somebody with access to Nesis, you, are going to have to come out here when that report is ready and then download the files. Once you've got all the emails in who, for who gets notified, click Next. All right, so here's step eight, uh, step six, sorry. Configure your options, and this is where you're going to name your report. Uh, the, at the very top, this is what shows in the queue, the name of the report. The next part is the name that shows on each PDF, and they give you macros to use. So last name, first name, employee ID. Um, we don't use really use program name, uh, person ID. I don't really use that. Employee ID, you can put in there as well. You can try any and all of those um, to see how it comes out. Uh, employee ID, uh, this is the only place uh, that this report will include an employee ID. It will not be included on the um, data within the report. So, but if you need employee IDs, make sure you put it in the title of the PDF. The next one is a box to check to exclude any records that has an employee ID in it. Well, if you've included an employee ID in this title and then check this box, you are not going to get any reports generated. So I recommend you leave that box blank. This next one, the top bullet is default blue. You need to move it to bullet the second bullet. And this is where you can then access the PDFs in that queue. So make sure you bullet the second one down. We do not have FTP um, where you can save a report to. When do you want this report to start running? Set that date. How long do you want it to be available? A week, a month, two years? Set that date. Exclude entries marked inactive. Um, if you're running to include people that left your district but are still affiliated as inactive in your district, you probably do want to leave that unchecked because uh, you're running for the summary evaluations and that will include your inactive staff that are still connected to your district. If you include file attachments, this is going to include all the attachments that principals add, that teachers add, that counselors add, uh, when they're doing each step in their evaluation, it will make a PDF for every attachment. Export only completed plans. I've seen some districts use this. Um, they, um, it will only pull people who have completed our plans. And then you go through your list and you can see, oh, I still need Miss Jones as not in this list, so I will need to come run her report later. Uh, so that might be optional for you. Export only shared observations. If you click on that little question mark, it will give you an explanation. That's optional. And then this site options, leave it on the middle bullet. Associate the evaluation plan to the location of the owner when the plan was started. Every time somebody joins your district, they should start the plan in your district. So that's the plan that you want to get a report on. Make sure you leave that middle bullet bulleted and then click finalize. It will give you a page to make changes to any of your settings. So review your settings, make changes if needed, schedule your export button when you're ready. Click that. And then it will load up in the queue and you will um, go back and download it when it's run and, and open that PDF, save it on your desktop, uh, open that PDF and review your files. All right, so we're going to wrap up our NESIS home-based meetup. This is our home-based team for 2022-2023. Again, if you uh, need to contact any of us, we are always happy to assist. Our emails are uh, linked to our names. And again, I am always available. Uh, if you want some face-to-face -face time on a Teams call uh, or a WebEx call, you can set a half-hour appointment with me using the Calendly link here. Just choose whether you'd ha rather have Teams or the WebEx call. 
uh, and we can walk through any of your questions. And again, my email is Cami, C-A-M-I dot Naren, N-A-R-R-O-N at dpi.nc.